All right, mate, can I have a bottle of water? I get this comment a lot. And for those of you that don't know, all right, mate, can I have a bottle of water? Means, all right, mate, can I have a bottle of water? So why do they sound so different? It's because of something called elision. Elision is where you drop sounds, syllables, or even words to make your speech flow more naturally. If you can understand elision, it will make you a better listener and a more fluent speaker. But don't worry if you can't get it straight away. It will come with time from watching TV shows and movies featuring real accents. Now that part is really important. Real accents. You need to watch things with real accents. And I say that because the only people I expect to say, all right, mate, can I have a bottle of water? Would be students, English language teachers, or someone with a fake accent like Harry Potter. That's right, most people don't talk like Harry Potter or Harry Potter. In the real world, at least in the UK, all right, mate, can I have a bottle of water? Would be far more common than, all right, mate, can I have a bottle of water? If you do it the second way, in many areas in the UK, you would be labelled as posh. You see, in British English, or British English, it's very common to drop the t sound. So if I go into a shop in my hometown and I say, all right, mate, can I have a bottle of water? They'll think that my accent is fake and they might think I'm being conceited, which is where someone thinks that they are better than someone else. Some words are easier than others to understand. Butter, water, cat. Butter, water, cat. It's not too bad, but some words can be far more difficult for a learner. So see if you can hear the difference between these two people. Which one is saying can and which one is saying can't. Hey, could you guys subscribe to my channel? I can do that. I can't do that. Okay, and one more time. Hey, could you guys stop calling me Spider-Man? I can do that. I can't do that. So human A is saying can, and human B is saying can't. And there's a very interesting difference here. Can, when said by a native speaker, often comes out as can. Can I do that? That's called a weak form. And a weak form is used because it's easier and faster for us to produce. Can I do this? Can I do that? Can't uses the thing that we've been talking about, elision. We drop the t sound, can't, okay? But there's also something else there, isn't there? Can't. There's a sudden stop, and that's called a glottal stop. A glottal stop is a common feature of elision, but it's not always there. You'll usually see it at the end of word chunks. And you can find this glottal stop for yourself. Try saying the word, uh-oh, uh-oh. You might notice that there's a little stop between uh and oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Something's happening in here. You have a little flap that can open and close. And when we're saying, uh, we close that flap, uh, Oh, okay, and that's what's happening when we use elision in words a lot of the time. So let's take that word again, can. I've just closed that flap. I'm using a glottal stop. I can't do that. I can do that. I can't do that. Okay, so let's reflect. English is a stress-timed language, which means the stress happens at regular intervals as we speak. Every other word just needs to try to fit in that gap between the stressed words or sounds. The opposite of a stress-timed language is a syllable-timed language, like Mandarin Chinese. And in a syllable-timed language, every syllable gets roughly the same amount of time. People often tell me, 
that Chinese is the most difficult language in the world. But that's because they haven't tried learning English. But even though English can be difficult and it has so many different rules, I know that even you can become fluent in time. I'll see you later.